where did the survivor go after their liberation? Following their liberation, facing this extreme loss, Jewish survivors tried to re-establish their life. In weeks, hundreds of thousands of survivors were wandering throughout Europe, a continent scarred by the war. Some tried to return home, or at least to what was left of it. Yet, this was far from easy. Beyond the psychological pain of returning to the former homes and the tremendous difficult to retrieve their property from former neighbors and countrymen who now re resided in their homes, Jewish survivors also had to confront the fact that with the end of the war, a wave of antisemitism swept Europe. In Western countries, bitter words were directed to Jews, mocking their suffering, and Jewish civil rights were not easily restored. In the Netherlands, the Jewish community had to fight with the authorities in order to get hidden children back to their relatives and to the Jewish life. And in Poland and other Eastern countries, returning Jews forced violence and even physical threats. In Poland, for instance, more than 1,000 Jews were killed during the first year after liberation, adding, of course, to the immense sense of loss and tragedy. The post-war pogroms were carried out not by the Nazis, but by the local population in various countries. The most notorious of these pogroms occurred in the city of Kielce, Poland, in July 1946, when due to despicable blood label, violence broke in the city and its surrounding, ending in the murder of at least 42 Jews, some of them sole survivors of entire families, which were murdered during the Holocaust. The fact that some of the killing were done by police forces and soldiers and supported by the Polish church was especially shocking, as was the fact that hundreds of Jews who returned to small towns and villages were murdered by their former neighbors after the war had ended. After the war, the Western Allies established displaced person DPs camps in the allied occupied zones of Germany, Austria, and Italy. The first inhabitants of these camps were concentration camp survivors who had been liberated by the Allies on German soil. The population of the displaced person camps kept growing, mainly because Jewish refugees from Eastern Europe continued to arrive. At the end of 1946, as a result of these mass flights of Jews from Poland in the wake of the Kielce pogrom, there were about 250,000 survivors gathered in the DP camps in Germany, Austria, and Italy. This does not include millions of displaced persons of European Christians who had been forced labor for different reasons. Notwithstanding the survivors' many problems, an intense and active lifestyle came into being in these camps. An educational and vocational system, cultural creativity, journalism, and even political life. Most Jews in displaced person camps in Central Europe left the camps by 1952. The majority immigrated to Israel, others immigrated to the United States, Canada, Australia, and other localities. Some stayed in Germany or went to other European countries which used to be their homes, such as Hungary, Italy, France, Holland, etc. Despite the enormous trauma, there was hardly an attempt to physically revenge former perpetrators. Jews longed not to give in to death and depression, but to re-establish themselves, their life. However, that would turn out to be a long and painful process. An heroic effort was needed to pick up the pieces of their broken life and to start over again. And although Holocaust survivors continued carrying with them the trauma and grief and loss 
Most of them manage to rebuild their personal ruins of their previous life, which were lost so suddenly and violently, establishing families and building homes and communities. Our daughter was born seven years after we were married. She brought much joy into our life. All of a sudden, I saw my mother's eyes. The next day, I saw that she looked like my father. So I realized that despite it all, there is a continuation. <laughs>